We just finished our spot illustration project. If I open up my folders, which are nicely organized, it was assignment five. I've got all my files there. The most important files being my vector EPS file of my clean line art. Right. Remember, this is a vector, so no matter how much I zoom in, it's made with anchor points and smooth connections between them, so there's no pixelization. And so this file can be used at any size for any purpose. Unlike the logo, there are little areas of, of wonkiness, which are just fine because this is just the inked line art, digital inking, for a spot illustration, a free-floating illustration, appropriate for use for like a t-shirt, for a sticker, maybe for an enamel pin, all that kind of thing. Enamel pins, like Fiesta medals this time of year in San Antonio. Now, it's just one component of this next assignment. This next assignment is a poster design, either horizontal or vertical that combines your spot illustration, or if you choose not to use your spot illustration, you can use your logo from assignment four, right? Both of them are vector elements. They can be sized to any, to any level, and they're perfect for a poster. But what we need to add to that illustration is text, some sort of type design. This is going to be the cover. This is my sketch for the cover of the coloring book. And I've already designed the vector type for this. I did that last semester along with the spot illustration for Nico flying. But for this semester, I finished up the coloring example. You know, we went through the sketching of the spot illustration, the clean vector line art, the flatting, filling in these areas with just random flat colors largely so that you can select them easily in order to pick what we call local flat color. Local flat color is the color the thing is despite the lighting condition, right? So each thing here got filled in, <laughs> even though there's a lot of things there. Each contained shape got filled in. Then we played with duotone. Here we have a hard edge duotone that splits those local colors, like on the tower here, into a light and a dark. And you can see how the local color tends to be a little bit in the middle and a little bit more saturated generally than the duotones are. You can think of duotones as basically taking that local color, adding white to it for the highlights, adding black to it for the shadows. Cut edge means that you go between those two colors or those two variations of the local color with a cut edge with a very clean division. It's also called cell shading and animation. And then my final color, uh, my final color took that and played with full spectrum a little bit. You can see pinks here in the yellows. You can see like reds in the, in the tans. And it also softened the edges a little bit. So this is flirting with soft edge duotone though I still have the hard edge coming through because that kind of helps on an architectural illustration like this. But you see how these edges are a lot more blended than these ones. And there's also some like noisy soft edged texture to that, which I like to do with vector illustrations because the line art is already so black. I also offset the color from the line art a little bit. So we get these little white like misregistrations, because I like those kind of vintage printing effects. And we'll learn more about that as we do this poster. So there's the coloring. This coloring might change as I end up using it in the poster. I might make additions to it, but I have kind of nice resolved spot illustration coloring now. My next step is I have to think what type will go well with it. So because I've already designed the welcome to the nest coloring book type, I believe I have that here from last semester. This is our first goal, to know what our type is going to be and then to design it as a vector. And to do this, we can use pre-existing typefaces, but then we wanna modify them for our purpose. 
In logo or identity design, this is called a logo type, right? It uses type to create an identity. And that's a far more than saying, oh, I want to use Helvetica or I want to use Comic Sans for it. It has to do with the spacing around the letters. It has to do with, you know, the scaling of them, the angle of them, the decoration on them. And just in this simple title flag, we have kind of bubble letters that have an, an outline and a black stroke around them. We have highlights. We have this kind of cloud containing shape. Then we have the reverse outline with the, the two, and then we have just solid black shaped letters for the nest, and we have this little decorative flourish on the side. And then when we bring it into a poster, I'll show you the poster from last semester, and there are demo videos for this, if you want to know how to do that kind of type uh, in the YouTube for you from the fall semester. But our posters are going to become pretty large. These are going to be pretty big files with just, even though they're, they're rasterized, they have the smart objects of the type and of the spot illustrations. And so we combine our type design with our spot illustration, and then we put a background behind it. We'll learn how to texture and customize backgrounds. And then we put a, a border around that. And we can play little games like this does of breaking the border. But you always want to acknowledge some, for, some form of border on your poster because that's how it's going to be printed. If, if something is printed and it looks, at, when it's finished, like it has ink going all the way to the edge. That's because it was printed and then cut down. So you always have to design it with a, with a border. So this file is 17 by 21 inches. We want it to be around 16 by 20. And the memory it takes up is 125 megabytes which actually isn't too bad for something that's 17 by 21 inches at 350. But we're going to be using a lot of processing in our computers to do these posters. Sometimes while you're working on it, they can become well over a gig in their size. So since I've already designed this type, I need to come up with new type to go with my spot illustration. And I'm thinking I just want this to be so I'm going to use, you know, my basic PNG, my basic colored spot illustration here, like we would upload to Canvas. I want to put type that goes just with this. And I think what I just wanted to say is Northeast Lakeview College, like it's an enamel pin for the college. But I have to decide where does that text go? Unfortunately, it's kind of a long name, right? So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to, just like I did for the cover, I want to first do a blocking sketch. I know the, the shape of my illustration, but now I need to figure out where the type will go. And notice here, this was my blocking sketch. I thought that the campus logo could go right underneath the type, but then when I'm actually putting it together, it had to get flexible, right? So a blocking sketch, like any preparatory sketch here, is to try out ideas, but it doesn't lock you into anything. So we want to keep it really loose. So I will open up my spot illustration. I have it in a new folder, assignment six, which is our poster and type design project. I'm going to open that with Photoshop. And then I'm going to build the canvas size around my PNG spot illustration. And I'm going to make it at least 16 by 20. Because mine's more horizontal, I'll do it 20 inches wide, 16 inches tall. 16 by 20 is a standard art size, like 8 by 10 or 11 by 14. It's also kind of the largest art standard that we can print in the lab. So you'll see the poster hanging on the, the drying rack, the drying rail, at the critique rail at the back of the room. That's a 16 by 20 image 
it was done as a final project last semester on a 17 by 22 inch piece of paper, which is the largest paper we can print on. So 16 by 20 by 350 is a good standard for this. Now I'm going to go ahead and flatten the image because this is not going to be my finished poster. This is just my sketch. So I want a white background. Then I'm going to use my brush and you can always do this by hand as well. And I'm just going to use a basic brush, pressure sensitive with a, a pretty hard edge. And I'm going to do it at a, about an 80% opacity just so I can sketch. And I know that what I want is Northeast Lakeview College. So my first idea, I'm going to put on a new layer. I'll lock my foundation layer. My first idea is just to, to split it on the top and bottom. So up here we have Northeast, then Lakeview, and maybe they're stacked like that. And then across the bottom, College. Now this is called text blocking because you do it just like this. You make a block in which the letters go. And just from that, you can gotta get a sense of what that silhouette shape would be. Like if this was an enamel pin, if this was a, a sticker. And you can get a sense of if that's what you want or not. You can also make duplicates and play around with it. So maybe what I want is something close to this. Like any preparatory sketching or thumbnailing, it's good to try out a few different options. And maybe what I want to do is play with the spacing between these words a little bit. Maybe run the northeast part behind the clock tower a little bit. And then maybe shrink this college part because that, that seems to be a little too strong. And I'm just thinking out loud, working in the moment here. using what I learned from compositing to just adjust things on the fly here. So maybe I'll take this box. Obviously in type design, like in most types of design, <laughs> simplicity is better. So I wish that Northeast Lakeview College was a shorter name, but it is what it is. And so we have to solve that design problem as part of this digital art practice. Huh. So I'm going to paste this block onto a new layer with command X. So that I can do things like maybe flip it. And notice that without ever having to write out lettering, I can figure out good sizing here. And I can figure out if I want it to be really straight, if I want it to be curvy, you know, what's the silhouette shape that I want the text to take. That's a blocking sketch. I think this will actually work pretty well. So it's going to be northeast. The northeast will run behind the clock tower. The L from Lakeview will overlap the northeast. So it's nice and dynamic. And then college will be underneath here. Makes a nice little kind of fiesta metal shaped pin. Now, let me try another example, something that's totally different, because you never know really until you try it. I can always put type to the side. I can have northeast here, and then I can run like a horizontal band underneath. I can have northeast and then Lakeview College here. <laughs> that's an option. I could do something like, Northeast, running behind the illustration. 
I could do Lakeview really small over here and then college really big underneath.